Hello, in this video I'm going to be going over a solution to the basic function lab. Now, I'm going to do things probably the easiest way I know how. There's other ways to do everything. I'm not really making an attempt here to show you all the best ways to do everything. This is a long workbook. Um, as you can see, I'm going to have to scroll over by the time we're done. So I'm just going to do things as quickly as possible just to give you an idea of what the solution sh should look like. So we start with basic formulas. I use the term Big Five quite often because on the Home tab in the Editing group, under Auto Sum, if you pull, grab the little drop-down arrow, there's five functions here, right? And those are the most commonly used functions you might use in your daily life. Probably in some form or another, they are the most common functions that we use in uh, most Excel applications. So we've got sum, average, count, max, min. Not going to go over everything about those. I will in some other video someday. So I've got this data. Notice that the data is not uniform. It's what I would call staggered, right? So this, so column B starts in row one, column C starts in row two. Also notice that there are gaps in the data, right? I do that to make this difficult on you. So I'm gonna start up by just filling up these five functions and I'm probably just gonna leave it at that because if you can do it for one column, you can do it for them all. So I want the average of column B in cell B48. So I'm going to click in cell B48, and probably the absolute easiest way to do this is auto sum. I want the average. Notice I get a selection area. Notice that it stops at the gap. That is a problem, right? So how you are going to select this column, I don't know. There's a bunch of different ways to do it. In class, I showed a named range. I am a big fan of just clicking and dragging. So click in B1, hold, drag to there. Right? And that's all I want. And when I'm done, I can either press enter or the check. And I'm done. And the average is 43,053.91. Count. All right, so this is how many non-blank cells are in this column. So if I click on count, now I've got two problems. It stops at the gap. Excel's smart, but it's not smart enough to know that I actually want the whole column. And it also included the average, which is just wrong. So click, drag, select, enter, and I'm done. Notice B1 to B47, B1 to B47, it's a different function, but it has the same input. There's no reason why I couldn't just type these in, which is probably the fastest way to do it, if you're wondering. So I could write equals max, parentheses, oh, oops, I guess Excel doesn't like the back arrow. And I'm going to go B1 colon B47. Right, and that works just fine. Right, yet another way to do things. Uh, take that back. I mean, if some students like doing this, fine, I'll show you. Uh, if you zoom out, I'm going to have to zoom way out to get the whole column in there. Then you can, you can hardly read what these things say. I'm going to do the min. And f if you can actually see the data, then clicking and dragging is easily the way that you'll want to do it. Um, but it's pretty small, which isn't great. And I don't like this already. I've talked for three minutes about one sheet. At this rate, this video is going to take an hour, so uh, I have to have to start speeding it up. So I'm just going to do what I'm best at. We're doing sum, sum, select my range, and enter. Now, uh, fill handle. Let's talk fill handle for a minute. I could grab a formula. Now, that has a weird color to it, but the fill handle is actually this little thing in the corner there. It usually looks like a black box, like that. But if the cell's colored, it looks weird like this. If your cursor looks like that, which is basically kind of like a target, no arrows on the ends, you can drag and fill over. Now in this instance, those are actually correct, but the range is wrong, right? And, and since these are just black cells, there's nothing in them, they actually aren't wrong, but you didn't do the right thing because it says down here, do not include the black cells in your formula. And trust me when I say that there's plenty of ways for me to make it fill handle proof. If I were to click on this formula, for example, you can see it goes from H1 to H47. H47 is certainly where it should end, but it should start in, right, H6. So that's not really the right formula. So don't just fill handle these across. If this takes you more than a couple minutes to do, then you really need to practice on, I don't know how you're going to do these. You want to type it in, do named ranges, select the data manually, I don't know. Uh, but this should not take long. If it does, you need to practice. Next sheet, financial information. All right, this has answers in it. Let's pretend it doesn't. Uh, what are we doing? That and that and that. All right, 
so we're going to fill in these. So purchase total, that is going to be number of stocks times purchase price. No, you do not need to use a function for this. If you're just going to multiply two numbers, then why not just write it out? Every formula starts with an equals. Equals C2 times B2. That's all I'm doing. I've seen people use formulas in there, functions. Uh, no reason to do that. You're multiplying two numbers, right? It's not, it's not that difficult. Um, the other thing I did is I fill handled that down, which is fine here. I'm not talking about absolute references or anything like that at this time. Next, so current total, that's also a multiplication problem. And I'm going to multiply. And then rather than typing in, I'm going to do the point and click method, which I prefer. I'm going to multiply current price. Notice I click on the cell. It automatically puts the value in there times number of stocks. And when I'm done, I can either press enter or the checkbox. Fill handle it down. Right, profit loss. I'm going to say that is equals current total minus purchase total. Enter. And I'm going to fill handle that down. All right, I can't go down to here. Well, I could try, but you're going to get something like this, right? And basically what you're trying to do in this instance is you're subtracting this, which is, right, words, uh, and you're subtracting nothing from it, which is kind of a mess. You just have to read the instructions. Grand total, that sounds like a sum. So how about I'll just write it out equals sum of, and this is a weird combination of typing and clicking and dragging. Pretty much anything you could possibly come up with will work. Right, and, I, and I guess that's right. So the point of this worksheet is writing your own formulas. Right, Excel doesn't have a function for everything. NASCAR 1, can you sort the list by points in descending order? All right, so critical reading starting to become an issue on this one. Sort points descending order. You gotta know that descending means getting smaller. Uh, and so my favorite way to sort is I like to just put filters on the data. This already has filters on it. Let's pretend it doesn't. Uh, so some people convert this into a table. Tables have filters. I like to just put filters on it. So if you click anywhere in the data, it doesn't really matter where. I think it's key not to select some stuff, right? Just click somewhere in the data, click on filter. You're going to get filters in the right spot most of the time. And I want to sort by points in descending order. Points. Descending, right? I don't see that here. So descending is going to be largest to smallest, right? It already was sorted. That's what it should look like when you're done. If you sort on the wrong column, it's wrong, uh, but you had the right idea. It's not wrong if you turn this into a table either. It's also not wrong if you select the data and do something off of here, right? It's all the same. Don't care how you do it. They're all whatever is efficient and makes sense to you. On to NASCAR 2, so can you reduce the list to the bottom 20 drivers based on points? Reduce the list, that sounds like a filtering problem, so bottom 20 based on points. Here's my data, sounds like I want filters, so I'm going to click somewhere in the data, click on the data tab, sort and filter group, click on filter, now I've got filters, sorry, and I want the bottom 20 based on points, points is here. I want the bottom 20, right? It would be a mistake to go in here and manually check things. Instead, if you really want to filter the data, I can't encourage you enough to go to number filters. And I, sorry, I already forgot. I want the bottom 20. So I go in here and I don't see bottom 20, but I do see top 10. That's going to be where I'm going to go. Notice three dots, ellipses. That means dialog box coming. Bottom, click this up to 20 and there you go it's filtered you know it's filtered because the no the row numbers are in blue right and you can see there's gaps in there i didn't delete anything i just kind of hit them All right so that's filtering problem do one more and then i'll split it into another video so can you sort the list by driver name and display only the top five in the polls so sort the list by driver name this sounds like a filtering problem again so i'm going to click in my data data tab filters Sort by driver name, and notice it doesn't say ascending or descending, so I'm just going to sort it somehow. And display only the top five in the polls. All right, It's kind of hard to figure out what one says polls, but that is polls. And I want the top five. So again, I'm going to go to number filters. And top five is pretty similar to top ten, so I'm going to open up that. 
pull this down, make it a five, and there we go. Notice that I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rows. And you might be wondering, well, how come I don't only have five? Well, that is because there is a three-way tie for fifth place. All right, so top five is not necessarily going to give you top five. It's going to give you what it gives you. So that is the first five sheets, and it took us about 10 minutes. I should be able to pick up the pace as we go. I'm going to have to make a new video because rather than just make one 30-minute video, I'm going to make three 10-minute videos. That's kind of my goal. So keep on watching for some more solutions.